All right, welcome to Geometry SOL Review topic number one, coordinate geometry. Coordinate means coordinates, think graph. So all this stuff we're going to be doing on a graph. A big hint that you need to use graph paper on your geometry SOL is anytime you see coordinates like negative six, negative two, four, three, negative two, three, five, negative three, all those things we wanna start graphing these items. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right. So find the distance between two points. Distance and length mean the same thing. So let's plot our points and see what we're looking at. So negative six, negative two is our x and four, three, is point Y. So we want to know the distance between. Them. Now because this is a diagonal line we can't just count the boxes. What we can do and what I think is the easiest way is to turn this into a right triangle. So I'm going to go straight down from Y and straight over from X. And since these are vertical and horizontal lines, we can count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then this over here, we're looking for this distance. Since we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And this formula is on the back of your formula sheet if you forget it when you're taking the test. So c squared would be our distance. a and b are our 10 and our 5. So 10 squared plus 5 squared. 10 squared is 100. 5 squared is 25. So d squared equals 125. To get rid of the squared, we need to square root. So D would equal the square root of 125, which is approximately 11.18. Now technically, the square root of 125 can be simplified. What you really need to do with your answer choices is find the one that gives you the same decimal as the square root of 125, and that'll be the answer you choose. Finding the midpoints. So this one asks us to find the midpoint between two points, R, which is at negative 2, 3, and S, which is at 5, negative 3. So let's start by plotting our points. Negative 2, 3, and 5, 3. Negative 3. So this is S, and this is R. We want to find the middle. Now, you might be able to kind of tell where the middle is just by looking at that line, but it could be difficult. So I'm going to make a triangle again. And I'm going to count the side lengths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Midpoint, think middle. We know if the whole way is six, then halfway, or the middle, would have to be three away. If the whole way is seven, then halfway would be 3.5. So now I'm gonna count from one of my points, I'm gonna go down three and over three and a half. One, two, three. I land right here on my line. That must be my midpoint, which would be at one and a half, zero. Now in our third example, find the missing endpoint given one endpoint and one midpoint. So we already know the middle. 
So let's plot these. A is negative 5, negative 6. And m is 0, negative 2. So we already know that that is the middle. The middle is the same distance from either endpoint. So we're going to count how far to the middle and then follow the same pattern, and that'll show us the other midpoint, or sorry, other endpoint. We know since this is the middle that the endpoint's going to end up somewhere over here. So from A to M, it's up. One, two, three, four, and over one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to follow the same pattern. Up, one, two, three, four, and over five. One, two, three, four, five. So this must be my other endpoint B, which lands at one, two, three, four, five, one, two. thing you guys might have to do with graphs has to do with parallel and perpendicular lines. If you need to find an original slope, you have your slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you're going on a graph, you can count your rise and your run, figure out how much you go up and put it over how much you go over. And then if you're using the equation y equals mx plus b, your m is your slope. If you need to apply the slope, if they're talking about parallel lines, remember that parallel lines have the same slope. So let's say the slope of the first line is two-thirds, the slope of the other line will be two-thirds. If they are perpendicular, then they are opposite reciprocal slopes. So let's say the first one is two thirds, the other one would be negative, because this one's positive, and then you flip your fraction over, so negative 3 over 2. And that's not in your packet anymore. The other way is to help use uh, your ruler, because it's a rectangle, so the opposite sides are parallel, and the corners are perpendicular, so using the corner will help you find a perpendicular line, and using opposite sides can help you find a parallel line. So let's see how that can help. Line T contained points negative five, sorry, negative eight five and five negative three. Identify the points other than the point P, which is right here, with integral coordinates, that just means no decimals, that is on a line parallel to T and passes through point P. So I'm going to start with my ruler. So I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to line it up with line T. So now that I have my ruler, I can move it around and as long as I'm just moving where the ruler is and not turning the ruler, it'll stay the same parallel slope. So I'm going to line this up with point P. And now I'm going to draw a line. Move my ruler out of the way so it's easier to see. And now I'm just going to check and see which of these points are on the blue line I just drew. So 2, negative 5. 2, negative 5. Yep, that's on my line. That's one of the answers I'm going to choose. Negative 9, 1. Not quite. Negative 6, negative 1. Yep, that works. Negative 2, negative 4, not quite. 0, negative 4, yep. And negative 4, negative 2, looks good. So those four are my answers. And our last example. The slope of line P is negative 2. A, 5, negative 1, and B, 1, N. Given those, find the value of n so that AB is perpendicular to line P. So I'm going to start by drawing some axes in. 
and they won't be drawn on your graph paper that you get for the SOL, so you'll have to do that as well. We need to be perpendicular. So let's start by making our slope. So our slope currently is negative 2 over 1. Our perpendicular slope, we need to flip the fraction over. And because this one was negative, our perpendicular slope will be positive. So that's the slope we're going to use. So I'm going to start by plotting A because it gave me both coordinates. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. And now I need to follow my slope pattern, 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2. But I ran out of graph paper, so I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. And I can keep going. Now I'm going to look at B. It told me that the x value is 1. So I'm going to go to where the x value is 1 and find that point right there. Well, that's at 1, negative 3. So that must mean that n equals negative 3. Hope this helps. Now work on your practice problems.